My name is Becky Fiddler. Today's muscle functions video is going to be on the gluteus maximus or the butt pretty much. Uh, so like always I'm going to go over the origin, insertion, functions, and exercises of this muscle. So to start off, the origin of the gluteus maximus is on the quarter, <clears throat> on the posterior quarter of the iliac crest. Okay, and then, <clears throat> excuse me, and then connects onto the sacrum and the lumbar fascia and the coccyx and what is known as the sacrotuberous ligament. Okay, so the sacrum and the coccyx is pretty much your tailbone. Okay, your tailbone is going to curve way down and it's just going to connect along that. Okay, and then that sacrotuberous ligament is somewhere right off the side of the uh, coccyx, which is the tip of the tailbone. Okay, then the in where it inserts into is the gluteal tuberosity which is just below the ball part of your thigh so it would go right into a groove like what you see on my arm right here it connects right in there okay and then also the majority of it actually connects onto the IT band which is connected to your tensor fasciae latte okay so you have a small portion of your gluteus max connected into that gluteal tuberosity and the majority of it's connected into that IT band. Okay, so to show you where it starts on my body, okay, which is the quarter part of the posterior iliac crest, okay, which is back here. Let me find it here. Yeah, which is right back here. Okay. And it also connects to that lumbar fascia, okay, and connects to the sacrum and the coccyx, which is your tailbone, and then that sacrotuberal ligament, which sticks off of the coccyx, okay, and then, and it inserts into that gluteal tuberosity, okay, if I find that ball part of my thigh, Okay, so it's right beneath that, and the majority of it connects onto that tensor, or I'm sorry, the IT band, which is connected to that tensor fasciae latte. Okay, so we're looking at a muscle that just wraps right around here, like so. Okay, now the functions of the gluteus maximus is extension of the hip. Okay, so extension on the hip looks like this. So we're basically just bringing the leg from standing to back. Okay, while keeping the hips square. We're also looking at external hip rotation. Okay, that is taking your legs from standing, okay, and just turning it out. Okay. We also have posterior hip rotation. Okay. So I'm standing here and that's just you see how my hips just rotate backwards. Okay. So it's posterior hip rotation. And then the upper fibers of the gluteus maximus helps with hip abduction. That's A B D duct. Okay, so that is pulling your leg away from your midline. Okay, and then finally, the lower fibers of the gluteus maximus helps adduct the leg. So the top part of the gluteus maximus helps the leg come out, whereas the lower fibers help the leg come in. So the upper fibers help with out, the lower fibers help with in. Okay, so this is hip abduction, this is hip adduction. Okay, you're adding something to your midline. Okay, so 
exercises for this particular muscle. A lot of people have lost their mind muscle uh, connection because they sit all day, computer chairs, at desks, or whatever, what have you. So, the best exercises, um, a lot of people will say the squat, but I think that takes your mind away from the gluteus maximus and puts it into the legs. So, I'm going to say that the best mind-muscle connection way to do this would be um, the hip bridge. Okay, and now you can show you what that is. Okay, now you can do this from the floor or you can do this right off of a bench or a chair, something sturdy. But you have, let's say I have the shoulder blades on there. Okay, so I'm going to dip my hips down and push up. And you notice that my knees come out. That's that external rotation of the gluteus maximus. So I know that it's working. Okay, because it's trying to use everything. And you can put a weight here and help with that. Dip all the way down. Squeeze, come all the way up. Okay. And you can also externally rotate your hips so that you're getting that extra work into your gluteus maximus. So um, that's the best way I believe on getting your glutes to become more active and not so um, lazy per se. Uh, you also can do hip abductions with bands you can do hip adductions with bands. You can just pull the opposite way with the band. Okay. Uh, posterior pelvic tilt. Uh, that you would just have to remind yourself to do on exercises such as a bench press. So if you you have that arch in your back during a bench press, that is not uh, very good form. So you would posteriorly rotate your hips in order to flatten your back onto the bench. So we have posterior pelvic tilt I went over, the hip abduction and adduction, okay, and the hip extension and hip external rotation. So again the best way I believe is the hip bridge and again you can do that from a bench or from the floor Okay, you can just push your legs up just as I did on the bench back there. So again, I hope that you are able to use this within your training program. If you um, don't have a couple exercises that are specifically for the glutes, I suggest that you do that. They are the most powerful body, the most powerful muscle in the body because they are thick. So. Just try it, give it a try, uh, eventually you'll start to notice some change, you won't be using your legs so much, you'll start to use your glutes a little more. But again, you have to keep practicing, practicing, practicing. So I hope you enjoyed this video, um, I know it's pretty early in the morning, but gotta get to work. Thanks guys for listening.